Okay, so we've had this down for about an hour. To be honest, very happy. Uh, it's a nice good metal color. It's a strong color, obviously for the Mustang without it looking too shiny and all the rest of it. So what we've done, we've masked up a little area. We're gonna use the dark aluminium. You could probably get away with maybe even steel or something else, but we're gonna try this. And what we're gonna do is just see if you can mask over this. So a little bit of a shortcut when it comes to painting. We're only gonna need a dribble of this. Okay, is we've masked up the square and what we'll do is, so we don't have to cut it, we'll just do each little area. Okay, so we're just gonna turn down the air pressure, that way you won't get as much overspray. Not that you tend to with this anyway. I'm just gonna blow in this little guy here. Just to see if we can get a difference in color. Dry it back. And also we can see if we take any residue with this when we peel it off, okay? So we're looking underneath, and actually that's quite a good sign. We haven't got much silvering underneath there. Okay, again, not much silver under there, which means it's basically resisting peeling off the top cut layer. Now we all know the troubles you have. That's actually not too bad, nice and subtle. But the troubles that you can have when if you're doing uh, alclats, and obviously you peel them off. Now obviously we have done the back of the hand trick just to pick up some oils and various things. So on the back of your hand like this and we just rub it to pick up some oil. All right, so we're just gonna pop that one on there. We're just gonna pop this one in here. Okay, that one's just off a funny little angle. So we're just gonna go across there. And then this guy. We'll do the entire outer panel on this one. And then we'll just touch in the bottom panel. And this is just to get us a difference in color. To be honest, it doesn't look like it's a, a brilliant color choice. Okay, just drying down with the air. And it's little tiny jobs, little bits and pieces. Okay, just peel these off again. Set. So then what you can do is go back to your other side and touch in the area. Now, to be honest, this isn't a massive change in color. Considering it's saying dark aluminium, chances are you'd want it a little bit darker than what we've got here. But this is just a quick, easy way of going around spraying your, your areas. Okay, and as long as you're not ramming your finger down into this, you shouldn't have any problems just doing little touchovers. Just drying down. And that way we can peel off. And we can just, there we go, we've done that entire outer panel. Again, it's not a mass change of color. Uh, it's not a huge difference. In fact, it's very even hard to see. It's a very close color, it's slightly different but nothing you'd go overboard about. Okay, so we're just gonna redo this edge in exactly the same fashion. And we're only doing this back one. Cut down with there. And there we go, hopefully you can see it. It's very difficult to see on camera actually. It doesn't show it at all particularly well. Okay, but you get the the gist of the idea. Chances are we'd want a slightly darker colour than that. So that was dark aluminium. So I'm thinking maybe in with the steel. We'll try it with a slightly different colour because this steel is a lot darker. Okay, so we have got the dual aluminium, I don't know, we want a dark colour here. So what we'll do is, we're going to reset, we'll go somewhere else and we're going to do up over the top of the manifold exhaust up here. With that darker colour that the Mustang has. Okay, so we're just going to pop that up there. Down over that 
it. Down the bottom. Okay, so what we do, we just dump that colour because to be honest, it's not exactly a brilliant colour. Okay, let's pick up a darker colour. So this time we're going to come in with the steel. And this is what we're saying, when you've got a brand new colour system like this, it is that thing of finding out what colours work, what ones don't, you know. And as you can probably see down here, that's a better colour. That's really what we want, okay. So we do up here. Too much air, way too much air. Okay. Probably way too much air still. That'd be more like it. And what we'll do, just whilst that's drying, we'll show you over here on this gun deck. So I just pick it up, back of the hand, okay? Right the way over it. And let's do these panels again. Okay, with a nice darker colour because in reality is they are dark. So this will just go over there like that. <clears throat> and as you say, go a couple of things. And the oils is better than picking up lint that it would be perhaps off of your uh, clothes or something else like that because you don't really want to do that. Just pop a bit down on here, but it does look like it's resisting uh, pretty well. Again, these colours are a little bit odd because they don't cover quite as well. You can see the difference in tones down on these panels, uh, slight hues, but they're not like a, a huge big difference. If you wanted to go for a nice big dark colour, for instance, as you can probably see, you haven't got much going on down in there. It is a different hue, but it's nothing that you would suddenly think, oh, that's a dark colour, and considering this is steel, um, you know, and you look at the bottle, you'd think this would be really, really dark, but it actually isn't, which is quite odd in a lot of ways, okay? But we have got different metal hues coming down there, and it is resisting all forms of peeling uh, and everything else like that. You can actually see that gun door now. Looks quite nice, actually. All right, and everything else like that. But that is literally how we would go about it. I think what we're going to try is a darker colour, so I'm thinking... Titanium is going to be too light. Dark aluminium we've tried. Exhaust manifold. Uh, gun metal. I don't know. Even maybe a gun metal down in there. Titanium maybe. <clears throat> but this colour that we've put down, this silver, these all seem to be just be so close in shades right around it. It's a little bit difficult to get my head around it to work out exactly what colours you would use and everything else. But it's resisting handling. We've got no wipe spots. We're not sort of rubbing it away or anything else like that. So generally, it's quite nice. Okay, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to carry on, just play with the different few colours, see some different panels down in here, here, things like that, and we'll see if we can get uh, a bit of a, a handle on the colours uh, and their different types of metal effect. Okay, so we are masking up. Uh, and we're preparing to put the white stripes in. Now, we know this stuff's pretty tough and durable. So um, I'm being a little bit more uh, open with the masking tape now. So getting the measurements right 
And I know it's an old joke in the modeling community because invasion stripes are never all the same size. They were put on very haphazardly and no one really cares about it. But for some reason, us modelers love to get it right. So anyway, I've got the old calipers out and all the rest of it. So 45 mil right the way across. So that is gonna be our white section that we're gonna do and we're gonna put that in. And then what we're looking at is roughly around about nine millimeters per stripe as a guess, okay? Just as a, a bit of an average. So for this, we're gonna be using uh, XF2. Change over my airbrush to my acrylic one, okay? So like I always say, when you're spraying any type of uh, flat surface or texture surface as it goes in, you just want it to do its bit, okay? So what we're gonna do, we're gonna knock most of this out we just got a bit left in here, like there, okay? And then we're gonna make it quite thick. So we're gonna make it quite thick, this mix, okay? So it's about two thirds white paint uh, to one of uh, thinners, okay? Self-leveling thinners, so it should give us a nice satin finish rather than a dead flat finish you would get if you put this in with a little bit of uh, X28. Okay, so we'll just move some of these tools out of the way. Okay. So what we're gonna do is literally spray this in. Now, as you might notice, the gear's in here, the well's in there, we're gonna paint them all afterwards as an afterthought. For the moment, we're just putting in the white area. So we just check our flow. Okay, white paint coming through. So we just lightly going to dust the coat in and we're just being mindful of overspray where it's going and as we know this doesn't have to be nice at all because it wasn't nice at all okay so and that is what we're going to get Okay, so keeping it dry looking, we don't want a wet effect on this. Okay, so just being mindful of overspray where it's going. And we're going to do this sort of in section. So, what we're going to try and do is do the uh, first of all, the under the wings and then we'll move around and we'll do the belly one and then we'll do other areas so it's all completely covered and we'll do the doors probably separate and everything else okay so let's just drive back just in down the other side okay leaving edges of those wings okay and there we go so what we're going to do let that dry that's going to take a little while to dry we've still got the white in here Okay, once that's dried a little bit, we're gonna unmask it. Once it's unmasked, we're gonna do the belly area because obviously you've got a single white stripe that's gonna go up the belly, which is technically this one here. Okay, but we've gotta cut in a swoop and a line and everything else like that. It might be easier just to re-put this back in and put the metal work in afterwards than it is here. We've also gotta do the white for the spinner cap so we can do that at the same time. That takes care of that. And then we've got a blue band which is gonna go around here at the front. The other bits like the olive drab on the top, very straightforward, no problem at all. Okay, and putting the black in, to be honest, is gonna be very easy as well, okay? But this is what we want. Just wanted some nice sharper lines just down on these ones here so we could put the black ones in. We'll mask over the white areas, put the black in there, and we'll be good to go. Okay, so we are all masked up. Uh, we got the uh, white work all done looking very nice you can see we put that little curve in there and on the other side and that's dried so what we do we've mastered up again this is a little bit of uh, artistic license purely because trying to put 9.1 whatever it is mil as I worked it out is going to be a no-brainer so I've gone 9 mil throughout them all so we've just done the bottom and then once we've done this bottom part what we can actually do is then just push on with the um, top half uh, by just putting in a few little black stripes and everything else and we can do the one around the belly but as I say I want to get these bottom ones all in so we're just going to blast this out just a second clean up the color cut I tend to use two airbrushes one for acrylic work one for uh, the lacquers and the hot paints and everything else to be honest the older needle is in my acrylic one this one will dump a lot more paint instantly 
Now for doing this one, we're gonna spray this neat black, okay? The part to this is, one, it'll give it a bit of texture. Secondly, it'll then hopefully, we won't get any bleed whatsoever, okay? So what we're gonna do, we're taking this, my favorite color, which is rubber black. As I say, I don't like using pure white and I don't like using pure black. Not so bad doing pure white on here because quite frankly, we're gonna uh, make a bit of a mess with it. Uh, we're gonna weather it and things like that. So we just need a drop of black. Okay, so we've got these little ones at the rear, so we just blow those. And then we can do these pylons. Don't worry about the gear and all the rest of it because we will take good care of that a little bit later on. So we're just keeping the leading edges of the wings nice and flat. And then that way we'll get a, a softest edge between the front and the back. Okay. There we go, just another little coat. Just over those. Okay, and so we'll do all the other bits and pieces as a separate. Okay, we'll just dry those back. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to hit it with the hairdryer, okay, just to speed things up, and we can unmask and we can have a look. Okay, so we just put the paint lid on. Let's have a look at the moment of truth as this all starts to take colour. I'm impressed with the uh, the way that the the uh, metalizer is not affected by the tape, so you can tape right over it, which is obviously something we haven't been able to do before. Okay, we can just take these off, which have been protecting those outer wings. And now we can, the moment of truth, we can start to see exactly what we've got under here. And again, if we've got little oversprays and various bits and pieces, I am really not that worried because it's all going to add to the character uh, of everything. Okay. these nice invasion stripes and again all the doors and all the various bits and pieces I will do as a uh, a bit afterwards okay. but the thing is like all paint works like this you can make it as complicated or as easy uh, as you want so obviously I've done the straightforward, let's do it the easy route. Just mind your tape isn't stuck to the tape. Okay. Gently as you're removing this type of stuff, it's very much like a, a plaster. Okay. There we go. Looking very much the part. So what we got to do now is happy with how all of that is. That's worked excellently. See nothing on the top. We're all happy exactly how it is. So what we've got to do now: mask up the black uh, stripes just around here. We've got one across the tail, and then we've got to do obviously the anti-glare panel in uh, drab on the top of the wing. Uh, sorry, top of the cow up here, and we've got to put the band in at the front. But we are really starting to come together. Okay, so been pushing along very nicely with the Mustang. To be honest, I've fallen into all types of problems. I've just been pushing ahead from a speed point of view. First off, obviously, as you can see, we have it all decaled and done, okay? No problem at all. The decals are very, very thick, but that's not a problem. The problem I had was I thought I'd be clever and try something new, which is 
bitten me quite frankly on the arse quite nicely. Uh, what I tried to do is I tried to distress the decals and make them really play in. Now it's a little thing that I played with before and it's worked, this time to be honest it hasn't. What I actually do is I go over them and just lightly rub, and when we say lightly I mean very lightly rub, a brush with a bit of lacquer thinners on it. What this actually does then is eat really aggressively straight into the decal itself. But if you're very careful with it, one, it makes them look like they're painted on with no problem at all. But secondly, you can actually distress them and chip them and slightly uh, go around it. So actually what we were doing was, you can probably see it down on here on this guy, we went round. The trouble was it actually leached, it touched onto the metalwork and flooded everywhere. So very quickly I had a situation where it was eaten through all the metalwork, everything came black and everything else. And I've left this one over here so you can sort of see what we had. We had this type of mark down on there. So then obviously it ate through the decal, it ate through the metalwork and it was a nightmare all the way through. So because um, to be honest I didn't have the cameras rolling at that point, you have to be really really quick and get everything sort of in position and try and sort it out very, very quickly. So paper towel quickly over the top, knock it off, and then very lightly go round, to be honest, with this, um, which is a polishing sponge, and just go right the way over the entire decal. The trouble with that is the back edge, you can probably see um, the blue had completely gone, and we were down to basically plastic. So what we had to do is actually paint it in by hand. Now, luckily the star was okay, but it was the back end of the blue, and you can probably see a little bit of blue on the white and everything else. That, I think we can lose, it's not a problem. At the same time we was doing that, we were doing the underside and hopefully you can see it's a little bit two-tone colour because it had actually come right the way round under here because I had it on my finger then because I had lacquers everywhere and we ended up having a big one down here so I went through and I've resprayed masked round luckily down here and I've resprayed a bit of the silver but you might notice a little bit dirty on the front I've elected to probably leave it on there okay no problem at all. We've also done the uh, well works down in here so we've actually done that with uh, I think it's uh, XF4 just down in there we put the doors on and the fuel tanks and everything else and generally it's okay so it's like and breathe relax but as I said it's one of those things when it's happening I forget the cameras it's just like save the model mode and going through with it again it's totally my mistake I should have given it a protective coat I should have come along with an acrylic coat put that right over the metalwork to seal it to make sure we're okay but because I was trying to be clever and we were pushing on quite quickly I actually didn't put that down so the decals went on and obviously the decals were reacted with everything else but now we can actually get on and get some uh, protective coat on this because I want to now seal it and then we'll come in with weathering work afterwards and go with it but what I was going to do is do it all in one because the decals went down so well I thought I'd probably get away with the weathering wash but again it's one of those things sometimes you take a shortcut and it's made probably hours and hours of more work for me uh, than what it should have done as we've been kind of way through. Generally no problem at all. The props um, we've painted those up we've put them together we've put them in okay just a little bit of flat yellow XF3 and I did the old just drop it in thing so instead of using the decals which would be a nightmare just drop all the way in and then tap it off and it's probably here still there we go you can see so you literally just come along tap them off get the excess off and then leave for them flat to dry which we've been doing there so those are done so that will go in with the spinner in a moment and then that can be done as well uh, the seat I've got to put in and we'll get that sorted so really up for this one is to get a protective coat down on this one but we were speaking about it yesterday in yesterday's Q&A and uh, we were talking about dipping canopies afterwards so I've got one here and to be honest that would be a very nice candidate for a dip so what I tend to do is you can use anything I've got a little shot glass because this will fit in the shot glass that is the point to it okay so what we do we just take the lid off of this and we're just going to fill this up it all goes back so I don't think we're going to waste any of this okay it goes down there literally just like that now with this one it's got a little tab on the back so when we put it down it's not going to be touching but normally what I would say is make a little raft out of uh, something so normally cocktail sticks work well so if you've got a canopy it's going to be flat what you want paper towel down and then you want a couple of cocktail sticks and it, what it does it just makes it so you don't get a ring around it if it's laying down or the paper towel it can dry and then you get fibers off of it and all the rest of it this isn't too bad because like I say so it has got a tab on the back okay spring loaded clamps always dead handy for this so what you can do is literally put this in so this has been decalled up as well and it's all been sorted out and everything else like that so this is straightforward gonna be dip okay so we're just gonna dip that 
making sure we go right up over the edge so we come all the way out have a look at it see what's going on I've got a little bit of fluff in there or something so what we're going to do is re-dip again okay and then this time as we're pulling up we're not going to take it all the way out we're holding it sort of half depth so it can start to run off the entire thing okay so what we're going to do is very slowly get it up now this is giving it enough time for all those bits to come off okay now we're looking at it and i have got for some reason i'm not sure what it is so i'm just going to grab a brush i want a clean brush preferably but there is something in my surface here and i'm not sure what it is that's got rid of it it's gone whatever it was but because we've done that we don't want to put a brush mark so we'll re-dip again okay and then again halfway up let it sit and what it is it's just allowing it all to drain off okay and then you come slightly up just to the bottom and allow 90% of it all to drain off okay and then we just come up all right and then we're going to do is just touch those corners again allowing it to drain off okay then what you want to do is again check it so you're looking to make sure it's totally crystal clear and that you've got no fibers in it, no problems or anything else like that. And that's looking really very, very nice. Then we come over to the paper towel, we're gonna to go face down and we're just gonna let it sit there just for a sec. And again, trying to get most of it all off. Then normally, as I said, you'd have a raft. You can use cocktail sticks, whatever you wanna do down here. And we're just gonna place it on there, literally just like that. And then you really want to cover it with something. So a cup, a glass, whatever. But again, you need the air to flow around under it. And I think I'd have something pre-done for this one. Uh, that one hasn't got a disposable lid. Uh, but normally I use something like a Chinese container or something else like that. But I actually don't have much here at all. This might do it. So what we do, we're just going to place that over here. It's going to need, uh, let me put a sponge each side. That'll do. There we go, and that sits over it like that. The air can circulate around it so it can dry evenly, but what it does, it stops all the particles in the air coming down and sticking to it, because again, you're trying to neglect getting anything onto this whatsoever. So by, you know, obviously having bits in the air coming down and popping on there, that is gonna ruin it. That isn't gonna take too long to dry. Half an hour, it'll be dry, you'll be touchable and everything else like that. If you're planning on masking it, don't mask it for at least 72 hours. That way it gives it total time to dry and you're less likely to get any peel marks or glue marks or anything left on it. Whilst we've got that out, what we're gonna do is go over to the spray bay. We are just going to temporary mask over just a little bit. This guy down here. Okay, just to stop it going in the cockpit too much. And another little bit just here. Okay, but the rest of it, what we're gonna do, put it in here and just give this a simple gloss coat right the way over it. It can then dry for 12 hours and then we can get the weathering wash on it and we'll be just about done.
Okay, and there we go, all completely finished off. Again, this is one of those things where there's no right or wrongs with it. Uh, technically, the wings might have been puttied uh, and then polished up and everything else like that. We've had a few problems with it. You know, we're not gonna lie, I did make a complete hash of that wing and I've had to fix it as best as I can. But at the end of the day, this was sort of a mojo build for me. Uh, just come out of doing some real big heavy duty builds and things like that. It is a great kit like that. You can spend as much time or as little as you like on it. It was like a bit of a myth buster with this one. Is it a glue free kit? No, it's not. Is it a good kit? Yes, it is. It's a fantastic kit. And it is, because of its nature, a really nice kit to put together. It's quite straightforward. Uh, it's got a good level of detail. There is no real fit issues with it at all. As I say, we haven't used any filler or anything else like that. And all the bits, with a bit of glue and a little bit of help, get rid of the flash. They go together absolutely beautifully. Definitely the best 148 scale Mustang I've built to date. Uh, it's far superior to the Tamiya one. I think the Tamiya one for a newbie, I think would be a better option. Uh, but definitely, if you are, you know, used to modeling and all the bits and pieces like that, you know, moderate skills, you don't need anything fancy with this thing, then this is definitely the kit for you. I like the way that Meng have tried to make it glue free and everything else like that. I think they failed, if I'm honest, but I like their theory and their thinking and perhaps their business model for doing things like this. Because again, it's a great way of getting the kids involved into it. And I did this one with no specific tools, nothing like that, and then we went through. Painting it, different story, MRP paints, absolutely loved it. It went on an absolute treat. They are my go-to paint. As you can probably tell from my paint rack, I've gone and got rid of my gun's paints, to be honest, because this stuff really does work beautifully well. It's just so easy to spray. If you've ever had problems spraying acrylics or even enamels for that matter, seriously think about some lacquer base paints because these go down very, very nicely. It's more akin to spraying ink. So you've got all those benefits, i.e. no clogging, no spitting, no reduced pressure, things like that. And it just works every time you pull the trigger. So from that point of view, it's absolutely beautiful. Don't be put off by the price. <clears throat> or the size of the bottles, it lasts forever. And to be honest, we use silver, I put them all away now, we used a tiny bit off the top. I think we used around about two to three mil to paint this entire thing, no problems at all with it. So from that point of view, it is definitely worth its money. I hope you've enjoyed it. This is just a sort of brief look into our world here at Flory Models. If you do like this thing and you like what you see, don't forget what you can see it's Big Brother was done as a full proper video build, to be honest. This one was totally different because we actually used buffable paints and we used a lacquer effect over the top to make it sort of shine through and to have a more sort of worn metal look and everything else like that sort of there. But if you like this type of thing and you want to see more, we've got over 100 video builds up on the Flory Models site, which go right the way from opening the box to the final reveal at the end, far more in depth than this real three-parter that we've done uh, on this particular build. Some of them will go right the way through up to 15 parts, absolutely fantastic detail, right the way through, and I explain everything right the way through. So there we go, that's it. That has been your Meng 148 scale P51D Mustang cement-free kit. It's not cement-free, but it is a really nice kit though.